times that uh, I know some of you get bored. I've got new students here, so I have to go back and do that also. But I'm going to go at the parables at a little bit different angle today. I even wrote this message out. I don't do that very often. And you've got different uh, stages of it. I'd write it, and then I'd go back and rewrite it, and uh, write it and rewrite it. Uh, I see you don't have one, Brother Mike. Kathy, so you've got one here. All right. I don't know what stage that you have there. I printed them out several different times. You can kind of follow along with me. I'll just kind of. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, one of the greatest American heroes, one of the founding fathers of America, Anopheles Quadramaciglottis. All right. Uh, a history parable. A history parable. A little bit of history parable. It's uh, it is a not so well known historical uh, or not so well known history of the Americas that is not in the history book. It is fact, 100 percent. And I want you to look at that with me. I taught these parables. Uh, over and over again, and we'll go into them just a little bit. We're going to use just a, a, as a little bit of foundation because this is a, a historical parable also. I'm going to tell you about an insect that won many wars in Americas, an insect that won many more wars in, a, in the Americas, and that insect is Anopheles quadramaculatus. There are about 400 different species of, of mosquitoes. What does mosquitoes mean to you that know how to speak Spanish? Mosquito, what does that mean? Sister Andino? Mosquito, mosquito, little fly, little fly, mosquito, little flies, all right? There are about 400 different uh, species of, uh, of insects, but only about 30 to 40 of these uh, mosquitoes carry this plasmodium parasite, a plasmodium parasite. And uh, it transmits it to its victims. In America, they had plenty of mosquitoes uh, all the way back to the beginning of the Americas and the division of the earth, all right? There were mosquitoes here. But uh, the uh, Plasmonium vivax, Plasmodium malarei, and Plasmonium ovalae, and Plasmonium falciparum came from Africa, Africa. Now, the Africans uh, had that over there forever. The Americas gave three-fifths of all the food to the world. Once after 1491, they started taking America's food and spreading it all over the world, and it grew so well in some places that they started exporting it into other parts, and one of the places was Africa. And they started uh, growing food in Africa and then going back into Europe and taking foodstuffs back into Europe. Well, when they did that, they started bringing in malaria. Malaria. Malaria, it comes from mal in uh, Latin and aria, which means bad air. Bad air. They originally thought that, that this, uh, w when they would go into different areas, especially into America after this. Now, they brought malaria into Europe, uh, in England. It went into the different areas where it was low, where water could stand, where mosquitoes could, uh, they were mosquitoes there, okay? Always had mosquitoes. But mosquitoes weren't, didn't have this parasite in their gut called Plasmodium, uh, the four different names, Vivax, Malaria, uh, Ovalae, and Falciparum. Falciparum is the worst of those malaria parasites. And they would, uh, kill people by the thousands, especially Valciprium. In England, uh, I believe it was uh, Elizabeth that told them to clean up the swamp lands and to p p plow it and put it into uh, farmland. And they started taking up the swamps and everything else. And it was so cold before and the water, the ocean water came in there and it would kill the mosquitoes. But once they cleaned the area, then it became a uh, a mosquito paradise and a, uh, a malaria swampland. 
And then they brought it to America. To America. When they got started colonizing America with the Spanish and the English or British, they brought workers over here and they brought soldiers over here and they uh, said they had to be seasoned. They had to be seasoned. What it meant is they would go through and they would catch malaria. And malaria, remember, means bad air. They would go out into these areas where they had swamps and everything, and they thought they were breathing this bad air, and these fumes of the swamps was making these people sick. They were making these people sick. And, uh, and they would go through different stages, and, and in Bakersfield. How many of you live in Bakersfield? Anybody here not live in Bakersfield? Do you know that Bakersfield was a malaria swamp land? Kern Medical Hospital was founded to treat uh, tertian fever. It comes from tertius uh, terius, or uh, for fibrous, which is Latin for uh, fever every other day or every third day. One day you've got a fever, the next day you don't. You're all right again, and then the third day then you're all messed up again, and it just keeps on going. This what's it called tertian fevers, or tertian tertius fibrous in Latin. Tulare Lake, at one time, how many, you know where Tulare is? Well, Tulare Lake was very, very big at one time. This land, this ground, this whole San Joaquin Valley was one great big lake, and it had lots of mosquitoes in it. But before white contact, they didn't have any problems. But once the uh, Plasmonium vivax, Malaray, Ovalley, and Falciparum, got into these mosquitoes and people started buying, dying by the thousands and they founded Kern Medical Center or Kern General Hospital to treat these malaria victims, the malaria victims, okay? Now, uh, parenthetically also, parenthetically also, uh, earthworms came to America via the tobacco planters, all right? And it changed the whole ecosystem of, uh, of America the whole forest systems and ecosystems. America was virgin territory for all of these diseases. Now just think about different blood born and uh, different kinds of ground. America was virgin ground for all of these diseases and even for the earthworms. The complete, America was a total different place 2,000 years ago than it is today. The American Indians had completely cleared the land. Uh, uh, Two-thirds of America was under cultivation. Uh, there was no deep forest. You know, the wildernesses that, that uh, they talk about coming when in the 17 and 1800s when they came to the American wilderness? American wilderness was created by the Anglo-Saxon contact because it wasn't a wilderness before. It became a wilderness when the Indians died. All right, when they could no longer take care of the land. When you walk off and leave a homestead, what happens to it? It grows up. All right, it, it is overgrown. Sugar and tobacco caused more slavery than anything in the world. Sugar and tobacco. Because sugar and tobacco, what does it require? Lots of labor. Lots of labor. Now, before 1600, uh, there were hardly any black slaves in America at all. But less than 1,000. There were 50,000 Indian slaves at that time, and they were export exporting Indian slaves all over Europe, and it was a really a quick thing to have an Indian runner with your carriage in France and in and England and so on and so forth. Sugar and tobacco caused the increase and spread of slavery further than any other industry in the history of the world, except false religion. What were the Spanish missions all up and down California? What were they? Slave plantations. Slave plantations. Now, one thing about the, uh, where did malaria come from? Africa. What do you think, since, that, since it had been in Africa for millennia, what do you think about the African people? To survive this, what would they have to do? They'd have to become immune to it. All right? Immune to malaria, bad air, malaria, bad air, even though they didn't know what caused it. They didn't know it was a parasite carried from mosquito to, mos or from mosquito to the victims and back. 
and this uh, Anopheles quadrimaculus, quadrimaculatus, was one of the greatest carriers of malaria. After, after slavery became firmly entrenched in America, malaria spread like wildfire. Slave ships from England, from Africa to England and then to America. How many of you have read stories about the slaves down below in the decks and the galleys down below that were chained in their own uh, body fluids and uh, uh, waist for weeks at a time? Did you know that those slaves in the, those holes had a greater chance of survival than the sailors on the decks above? Why? Malaria. Many times when they got to where they were going, every sailor and even the captain would be dead. I have a very, very famous uh, ancestor, John Paul Jones. John Paul Jones worked on slave ships, and on this one slave ship that he worked on, on the way from Africa, and they were going to England, they had all these slaves, and everybody on the ship died, except for John Paul Jones. And he made it, and he got the ship to, to uh, Britain safely, and they made him a captain. And then he became the, basically the originator of the American Revolution. All right? By the way, his name wasn't John Paul Jones, it was John Paul. He was a Paul. All right, he named, he named himself Jones later on to get out of a murder that he had committed. Of course, that sounds like Paul's too, doesn't it? The whole you that read <laughs> Shadow of the Indian Star. All right. All right, these slaves were immune to uh, yellow fever and malaria. Now, in America, when they were building these great slam, uh, slave plantations, all the way through the Americas, Guyana, Cuba, all over, they had sugar and tobacco plantations. Sugar and tobacco plantations take a lot of labor. Well, the Indians were dying off faster than their Anglo-Saxon uh, lords. And so Indians didn't make very good slaves because they were dying too fast. And so what do you think they started doing after 1600? Started importing black slaves from Africa because they lived longer. Now, how many of you ever saw the movie Gone with the Wind? Come on. Who was that? Rhett Butler and Scarlett, Scarlett O'Hara, okay? All right. Now, how many of you remember Tara? Up on the hill, Tara was up on the hill. That great big palace, that southern palace. By the way, those southern palaces were started. The first southern palaces were the Chickasaw Indians and the Cherokees had those big palaces. You look back in history books. Great plantations in the south, and they grew corn. Corn was a, was a crop that was basically invented and genetically produced here in America that would spread all over the world along with sweet potatoes and a lot of other things, okay? Well, these uh, places in the south where they would take the, they'd have this big slant slave plantation and then up on a hill they would build their palaces with the big column, Corinthian columns on the front of you. You've seen those old places. I had a, a man by the name Bill Moore that did a, uh, um, a program on public television on the uh, plantations of the South, the great plantations. And they went and looked at these plantations, and all of them were up on hills. Why would they be up on the hills? At, in the South, at nighttime, right after at dusk, what happens? The sty, skies start shimmering with lightning bugs. How many of you know what a lightning bug is? And Anopheles quadrimaculatus. And up on the hill, there's going to be less mosquitoes. And they had these high windows, and that's where they invented these screens, mosquito screens, all right? So uh, Tara, those uh, palaces that they had in the south up on the hill, that was necessary. Now, when these black slaves came from Africa, they got some hitchhikers following them. All right? The hitchhikers was a plasmonian parasite hitchhikers. Plasmonium vivax, plasmonium malarae, plasmonium ovale, and plasmonium falciparum and the yellow fever. 
How many ever heard of the yellow jack? The yellow jack. When they were bringing these slaves from Africa and everything else, the ships that were infected with yellow fever would fly a yellow jack, which, you know, that was the jack of Great Britain, and it would be yellow. That would mean this ship is infected with yellow fever. And the people would die. They, their body inside would just uh, basically dissolve. They'd vomit up blood and have bloody diarrhea until they ran out of blood, and they died. Devastated. By the time the American Revolution came along, many of the survivors of the Plasmonian infections in the Americas had finally survived. It hits children at first, and if the children survive, you can read histories of people that had uh, these uh, tertian fevers, and they'll talk about their little children dying and different ones and them and different uh, chronicles. They would they would record their own events of this tertian fever. Major General Charles Cornwallis, any of you remember who he was? He was one of the major generals here in America that was fighting against George Washington. He had 7,700 soldiers that he brought over here, and most of them came from where? About 70% of them came from where? Malaria-free Scotland, because it was too cold. What do you think happened, happened to those soldiers when they call, crossed in? As long as they were in New York up there where it was colder, they were all right. But when they got down into the southern states where they fought, started fighting the war and they crossed the Mason-Dixon line, that's the plasmodium zone. That's where the parasite thrives. Only 3,800 of his soldiers at the most could fight. The infection rate at this time was 233%. What does that mean, Brother Mike? 233%. That's right. The average soldier got sick 2.3 times with malaria. And remember, how many kinds of malaria are there? Four kinds of malaria. They got sick 2.3 times. 2.3 times. More battles were won by Anopheles Quadramichelatus than they were soldiers and bullets. All right? More than bullets. By the time the uh, malaria had weakened them and dysentery and then smallpox, our great general, George Washington, during the winter of Valley Forge, inoculated all of his soldiers with the smallpox vaccine of the day, which they would give themselves a little, they would give themselves smallpox. And they would have overcome it because he knew that they were going to fight. And this is what we call germ warfare. Not intentionally, but secondarily. So he was going to inoculate. His, his soldiers were already somewhat immune to Anopheles quadrimoculus plasmodium infection. So he's going to go one stage further. When the smallpox starts rising, I'm going to be able to win. And of course, old John Paul Jones over in, in Europe, he was fighting all the wars. He took the, he took the war to Great Britain, and he took ships over there and started whooping the socks off of the British over there. My relatives. So. <laughs> Pauls are crazy anyway. Well, uh, one of the greatest founding fathers in America that stands tall as Anopheles Quadrimaculus. He stands tall among the founding fathers of America. Remember, good ground, bad ground, good seed and bad seed and blood-borne infection. Remember that all along here. Remember these things. The Civil War. The Indian Wars... Uh, the Indian Wars basically were fought by malaria and smallpox. We know that within 100 years of white contact in America that 100 million Indians died, either by direct being killed or by Anopheles quadrimaculatus, smallpox, yellow fever, 
all of these diseases. So the Indian Wars were not won so much by bullets, but by what? By disease. And remember also the Columbian Exchange. <laughs> Europe brought America disease, and we gave them three-fifths of all the food that they eat today in, a, in the world, and 70% of all the pharmaceutical medicines. All right, that's what's called the Columbian Exchange. Now the Civil War in America. What do you think won the Civil War? I have something here. All right, I want to show this on camera also. See what that is? That's a you see what's in the middle of that Confederate butt bumper? A 58 caliber smooth bore musket ball. All right. What do you think happened to that soldier? You say maybe he was lucky. I kept this up here in a little deal because that's got lead on the back of it. It's brass. It's got lead on the back of it. And lead is what they used for uh, uh, flux back then. If I don't know what they used for flux back in this period of time in history. All right. Huh? All right. No, that's what that's what steel and iron. What they use with brother Mike? Arsenic. Arsenic. <laughs> <laughs> so it's poison. <laughs> it's poison that they use to say. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, there it is. There's that 58 caliber musket ball. All right, right there. I put that on camera. All right. That's what it looks like. Front and back. I'll have this up here if you want to look at it. Is that guy Christian and on that belt buckle? What? Is that guy Christian and on that belt I don't know, brother, but he may not have made it. <laughs> Just because that bullet, that belt buckle stopped that bullet, I'm going to tell you something, that was an impact. That's probably a 600 grain bullet right there. And it hit him in the belt buckle, but I'm going to tell you something, the belt buckle pushed him backwards. <laughs> I can tell you that much right now. What happens sometimes, I've been shot and blown up a few times. I know what happens when you get shot even with it, by explosions. The gun blew up in my hand one time, and the door behind me was blown off the hinges. That ought to just tell you something. I had some angels busy at that moment. <laughs> that old boy may have had an angel busy with him. I don't know. Okay? Now, the, the troops, and the northern troops, we know that the north of the Union soldiers had a whole lot more money than the southern soldiers, didn't they? The south, okay? That war is still going on today. Every time we have an election, just look at it. The southern states are standing out, still fighting for their states' rights, so-called. Okay? It's still going on today. Now, one thing that uh, during the American Revolution, one thing that the, uh, the American Indian gave to the whole people of the world was what? What did they give to them? Freedom from tyranny. Freedom from tyranny. Everything in Europe has class. If you're in a certain class, you stay there. You don't come up here. You have station. And when they came to America, they couldn't teach these Indians over here anything about the stations of life. You're little, I'm big. You look up to me. Indians looked at each other and said, I see you eye to all the eyeball. You're not better than I am. American Indian societies were democracy. Democracy originated here. This is where it came from and it spread all over the world. If you want to thank anybody for democracy in the world, or freedom, any place, or social standing on equal, you thank the American Indian people. That's where it came from. That's where the ideas came from. All right, let's go on a little bit further. More soldiers died from malaria Anopheles quadrimaculatus than they did from southern bullets. They were 800,000 victims or casualties in the Civil War in America. Most of those casualties were not from bullets or cannons. They were from disease. When the northern soldiers went down and where was most of the, where was most of the, the battles fought? In the south. When they crossed the Nason Dixon line and the Plasmonium zone, what do you think happened to those northern soldiers? The American Civil War was probably extended at least two years because of Anopheles Quadrimaculatus. It would have been over a lot faster. Okay? Now let's talk about us today 
and mankind in general. Go to Mark, the fourth chapter. Mark, the Gospel according to Mark, caught a mark on the fourth chapter. And I want you to think about good ground and bad ground and good and bad seed and blood-borne infection. How do we get our uh, Adamic nature? Where does it come from? The blood. Where does our blood come from? Where does our blood come from? Brother Mike, you remember where your blood comes from? Your father. Remember that. Brother, Brother John, Dr. John, where does your blood come from? Daddy. Who is our daddy? The daddy of all the human race. Who is the father of all the human race? Adam. As in Adam, all what? Sin. So our sin nature comes from Adam, our daddy. A blood-borne infection. Just like the plasmonium, vivax, and, pla and pla plasmonium olivarae, all of these different blood-borne infections, that it is a parasite. Now just think about the infection of sin is a parasite also. Isn't it? It lives off of your flesh. How many of you know that we're in the, the Christmas season, aren't we? How many of you are old people here? I can look at you and tell you which one you're old. You know anything about mistletoe? Remember when they used to take mistletoe and they'd hang it under the deal and then you go over there and you kiss your girlfriend underneath the mistletoe? Isn't that the old story? So long ago. What is mistletoe? It's a parasite. It's a parasite. How many of you have ever gone along out, out here on the tree or a bush on the side of the road and see this little red looking thing? Looks like it's got tentacles all over. It's like spider webs. That's a parasite. Parasites. Worms. Dogs have worms. Cats. You have to treat your dogs and cats for worms all the time. Worms are a parasite. A parasite. That type of a parasite is what the vivax and, and olivare and the malaria and falciparum is. These are parasites. It's a little worm. Small one but it gets into your blood. My cousin, Fred Waite, was the one that fought in the Lincoln County War with Billy the Kid. He died when he was 40-something years old. He was a great statesman among the Chickasaw people. He left Lincoln County. Uh, uh, the Th Paul McClure and Waite family sent him out to Lincoln County to go in partners with John Tunstall. Uh, About the time Fred Waite got out there, and Fred Waite was a great big guy. He was a great big Indian. I mean, you can see pictures of him on the website. And in history, you just put in Frederick Tecumseh Waite, and you can go and find pictures of him. He was a big man. Sam Paul was about like this. Fred Waite was up here. Giant of a man. But he went out to uh, Lincoln County, and the time he got there, they had murdered <coughs> John Tunstall. Well, he organized the regulators. He was going to put Billy the Kid and put him on a different ranch. My family had thousands of cattle they sold every year and they were going to run them in the Lincoln County and make more money out there. The Pauls were entrepreneurs. That's in New Mexico. Lincoln County, New Mexico. There was a bean field war yeah, down, down in Mexico, I think it was. Anyway, uh, when Fred got out there, he got malaria somewhere along the way. When he went back, when he finished at deputizing the regulators, you heard the series about the, you know, you've seen Young Guns, Young Guns too, maybe, and all this kind of stuff. He went back in. After he finished fighting the war there and won the war, basically, he went back to Falls Valley, Oklahoma, and became a marshal, and he became a judge. He became a lawyer. He became a speaker of the House, an attorney general, and uh, a newspaper editor, and senator, and all kinds of stuff, and was going to be governor the chief of all the Chickasaw Nation, but malaria, bad air, malaria, took his life short. He wasn't even 50 years old when he died. Probably had falciparum. Mark 4 and verse 1, and he began, that literally it says in Greek, and he kept on teaching again by the sea. This is Jesus. And there was such a great multitude gathered around. How many, how many people do you think were around Jesus right there? When you have all the cities around uh, Galilee, and he's down in Galilee, there were 30, 40, 50,000 people out here. Now, how, how would you uh, speak to that many people? 
without microphones and without amplifiers. How would you do that? Huh? What? What? No, no, no. Physically. Who said that? On the water. You would go out there on the water. If you have ever been out on a lake, you go out on the water, and you can speak out there, and they can hear your voice for miles. Easy. It carries on that water. Boy, that's a real good soundboard. So Jesus, what did he do? Also gather him, and he got into a boat by the sea and sat down, and the whole multitude was on the sea and on the land, or was by the sea and on the land. And he was teaching to them in parables. Now, I told you about a historical parable here, so to speak, about Anopheles Father Maculatus that taught stands tall among the American heroes and the founding fathers, okay? It was virgin ground over here where it's gone. The Word of God over there in parables, Jesus taught in parables. What were the two purposes of the parables? What were the two purposes of the parables? One what? One was to hide and one was to reveal truths. One was to hide and one was to reveal truths. And he kept on saying things in parables and kept on saying to them in his teaching. He said, listen to this. Behold, a sower went out to sow. A sower. Who do you think the sower is? Later on it explains that. Who is this sower? The sower went forth to sow. Who's sowing seed right here? Spiritual seed in this verse. Who's doing it? Who's speaking? Jesus. All right. Who's he speaking to? Great multitudes. And in the great multitudes, who's there in the great multitudes? Basically two different kinds of people. Lost people and saved people. Lost people and saved people. All right. So there are two different kinds of uh, people out there, lost people and saved people. But he tells us something that uh, that is even more definite than that. Let's look at this. The sower went out to sow. And it came about that he was sowing, and some fell beside the road. Now look over here in, in the little thing I set out here. There are four kinds of soil. These four kinds of soil represent all the classes of mankind and all of the philosophies of man and all the different temptations and everything. Remember this blood-borne illness that we have, this infection from Adam? It's a parasite. It wants to take you down. It wants to destroy you. We're all infected unto the second death. We're infected with a, a death dealing. This, this infection of Adam is going to deal death to us, isn't it? But if we don't do something about it, it's going to take us even to the second death. All right? Even unto. This is a blood-born infection. Adam's sin and us. Jesus didn't have Adam's sin in him because he didn't have any blood from Joseph or any human. His blood came from God. His blood came from God. All right? It was pure blood, sinless blood, with no infection in it. We're all infected with this sin. And it says, Behold, the sower went from source to sow, and he came about that he was sowing. Some seed fell by beside the road. That's one kind of ground, beside the road. All right? What kind of ground is beside the road? Hard ground. It's packed ground. If you go out and you look at the, these fields where they were plowing, a man would go out there and they would plow. By the way, the American Indians invented the best plows in the world. They, didn't have them figured, they figured out then the Chinese invented the best plows in the world. That's the Hamite races in the Anglo-Saxons, even still over there, the Shemites in, in, in the Middle East were still using these plows that were just like this. All they were is a, something like that. You suck it in the ground and you plow with it and it just tugged a little trench. The Chinese and the American Indians built a plow that threw the soil to the side and turned it over and the plow will go through a lot easier. Well, Europe took them, what was about the 1700s before they got a real plow that would take less labor. There's a lot of things in history. <laughs> a lot of little things in history that you don't turn up. Little mysteries, little secrets. All right. Well, it's hard ground. Here you have a field. 
even out there in my field. Around the field, you have a rock. You have a road. And this road is driven on all the time. And the ground is packed down very hard. That's what we call packed ground or hard ground. Okay? Hard ground. Do you think seed can get in that hard ground? Some people's hearts are hard, aren't they? Can't penetrate them. They're so sin and hardened that they can't be touched by the seed of God. They are so infected with that blood-borne infection from Adam that they won't allow the Word of God in their minds, in their hearts, in their spirits, or in as hard ground. I talked about preaching on hard ground when I was in Nevada up there. Boy, you go listen to some of those sermons up there, and people fight me when I'm trying to preach. <laughs> they didn't want to hear the truth. They wanted to be religious. And I'm going to tell you what, there's a whole lot of people around here that wanted to be religious. But they were hard ground. Their hearts were hardened to the real truth of God's Word. Look what happens when it falls beside the road. And what happens? Some fell beside the road. And what happened to this seed that fell beside the road? The birds came and they ate it up. Now we're going to find out who these birds were. Who are these birds? Devils. Evil spirits and devils. When God tries to touch some people's heart, the devil will get involved. We, if we are ever saved at all, it's by the grace of God. I tell you what, there's been a lot of religious people in the world that get up and preach. John and Charles Wesley came over here and started to become missionaries in America, and they were lost. Lost people. They didn't know the Lord. They went back over in Egypt, back over in England, and they got, went to a revival meeting over there and heard a Baptist preach and got saved. But they already founded the Methodist Church over here. Lost people. There's a lot of problems with, with churches founded by lost people. They're usually extremely unsound <laughs> theologically. The birds came along and ate it up. Another seed fell on rocky ground. Rocky ground. Rocky ground. Now, rocky ground. What well, if you go out there on the side of the road? You can go down the freeway, and the freeway is basically made out of homemade rocks, which is cement or blacktop. But it's basically it. What is it? It's a rock, isn't it? On the edge of the rock, what happens at night time when the ground cools and sweats and all this kind of stuff? Right along the edge of it, it produces moisture. And we find weeds grow very fast, don't they? Weeds just grow and grow and grow real quick. They'll be dead every place else, but on the side of that man-made rock road, there are little life weeds. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it did not have much soil, and immediately it sprang up because of what? the moisture got by out of the rocks. It sprang up and it had no depth of soil. And when the sun had risen, he was scorched because it had no root and it withered away. Number three now, third kind of ground. Third kind of ground. Now remember, we're all inflected with this blood-borne virus of Adam. Just like Americas, the Americas, all through the Americas, it was devastated with the plasmodium infections from the, mos from the mosquitoes by this plasmodium infection in the blood. It's a parasite. It's not a bacteria. It is a parasite. Adam's sin is a parasite to you. It's a parasite. It's like a big tapeworm. And it wants to suck every bit of life out of you until there's nothing there and put you in the grave. Another seed fell among thorns. 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 Brother Mike, you've been out on my place, haven't you, quite a few times. Brother Bill's been out there. Who else has been out there? Anybody else there? Brother Art. Brother Art, did you ever go out there? Remember when you were doing all that welding out there? Where's Fernando? Fernando, you've been out there. Remember when you're doing all that welding, you guys running up and doing welding those fence rails and all that kind of stuff? Did you ever get those sand birds in your socks and in your, they get in your ever place? In your clothes, in your socks, in your shoelaces. 
can't already get them out. And every time you get near one of them, it pokes you. Thorns. They fell among thorns and came up and were choked by the thorns and yielded no crop. Number four kinds of ground, now number fourth kind of ground. And other seeds fell into the ground and the soil, and it grew up. What kind of ground is this? Good ground. We've got good ground, we've got bad ground, we've got good seed, and we've got bad seed, and we've got blood-borne infections. Remember that. And it increased, and it yielded a crop, and produced thirty, and sixty, and a hundredfold. And he was saying, who has an ear, let him hear what the... Let him hear. Whoever has an ear, let him hear. Verse number 10. And as soon as he is alone, his fellows, his followers, his uh, church members, uh, they came along with the twelve. The, who are the twelve? The apostles. Now we have two of them that are mafioso, or don't we? Who are the mafioso members? Who are the Sicarii, the dagger men? Who are the two dagger men with Jesus? This is a test. <laughs> Judas and Simon the Sakari, <laughs> the dagger man. All right. Where was uh, Sicily founded by? These very Sakari. All right. I ought to get my friend Dean to come here. He's, he's a descendant of these people. And he was saying to them, to you has been given the mysterion of the kingdom, the secrets of the kingdom. To you it's been given the secrets. Who are they? This is the church. The apostles were the first gift placed in the church. Where did you find that in the Bible? Where would you find that the first gift placed in the church? Where in the New Testament would you find that scripture? Ephesians. What? Ephesians. Well, Ephesians does, but where is the specific place? 1 Corinthians, what? 12:28. The first gift placed in the church was apostles. And then it went on from there. The mystery, the mystery, the secrets of the kingdom of God. But to those who are on the outside, get everything in parables, in dark sayings. They get everything in dark sayings. Only not while seeing they may see and not understand or perceive. And hearing... They may hear and not understand, lest they return and be forgiven. Randall, that was a real good... I asked him the other day, well, I had stuttered so bad last Wednesday night, and one Sunday that I could hardly talk. And I asked Randall, I said, did you take out those blank spaces? He said, no, I just left them in there. That's embarrassing when I can't talk. Wednesday night, I don't know how long times that I stood up here and couldn't say a word from that stroke business. He said, well, he said, we're an act of grace. He said, discover the word dot com and discover the word to Dr. Jim and Sermon Audio and all that is an act of grace. He said, it was founded and, and began by a blind man. It is edited, the audio is edited by a deaf man. And he said, now we've got a preacher that can't talk. <laughs> what a work of grace. What a work of grace. Verse number 13 now. And he began to say to them, and he kept on saying to them, do, not, do you not understand this parable and how we understand all the parables? There's a, he's going to tell them a lot of parables. The sower sows the word, and these are the son, ones who are beside the road, and the word is sown. And when they hear, immediately Satan comes along and takes away the word that is sown to them. And in the same way, those who are the ones whom seed was sown on rocky places, who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. People like to be religious, don't they? But true religion isn't on the surface. It's from the heart out. It's from the spirit out. And they have no root in themselves, but only temporary then. And affliction and persecution arise because of the word and immediately fall away. And others are the ones whom seed is sown among thorns. Those who hear the word of God and the worries of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. This is those people that hear the word and, and, and there are so much worldlings. Used to hear that word preached. Sister Andino, we go way back for a long time, over 40 years. 
They used to use the word worldling a lot. A worldling was somebody that came into the church and wanted to bring the, the church into the, the world into the church and take the church to the world as worldlings. They just were too involved with the world. And the world, the things of the world, take us away from God's Word and, and from church. And those are the ones whom the seed is sown on good soil and hear the word and accept it and bear fruit and thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he was saying to them, a lamp is brought. He said, a lamp. Now here's another parable, the parable of the lamp. A lamp is not brought to be put under a bushel or under a, a container. You don't take a lamp and put it under, under a lid. It's not put underneath the bed. It is not brought to be... It is it not brought to be put on a lampstand? For nothing is hidden except to be revealed, nor anything been secret, but that should have come to light. If any man hears, let him hear. All right. And he was saying to them, Take care of what you listen to. By your measure it shall be measured to you, and more shall be given you besides. And whoever has to him shall be more given. Whoever does not have, even what he has shall be taken away from him. Parable of seed. And he was uh, kept on saying these things, the kingdom of God is like a man who casts uh, seed upon the soil. And he goes to bed at night, and he gets up by day, and the seed sprouts and grows up, and he does, and he himself does not know. The soil produces crops by itself, first the blade, and then the head, and then the mature grain in the head. And when the crop permits, immediately it puts in a sickle, because the harvest has come. We have the parable of the mustard seed. And we're going to have the parable of the tares. The tares are false wheat. That's false religion. Good seed and bad seed. False religion does one thing to the world. It makes it two times the son of hell than it was before. Tares out in the field. And what did the Lord say? He says, let's go out there and, and, and let's pull up those tares. He said, don't pull up the tares. Just leave them out there. Leave them out there. We'll harvest the grain and then we'll take the tares and we're going to burn them up. All the works of false religion in this world are going to burn up on these days. Their foundation is not in the Word of God. It's religion. It's religion. Now, at the bottom of my little message that I handed out, what kind of ground are you? What kind of ground are you? Think about this is personal now. What kind of ground are you? What kind of soil are you? We all know that we have that Venus. We have that blood-borne infection of Adam, don't we? But is, it, is that parasite of Adam, is it going to take you to the second death? Is it going to take you all the way to hell? Are you going to get immunization, inoculation? Are you going to get the fix for all of this, which is Jesus Christ and him alone? Nothing else is going to do it. No other medicine can fix it. The good seed and the bad seed. The good seed is the wheat. That's the Word of God. And those that sprang up, that's the children of God. Who are the bad seed? Those that are born of Satan. Those that are born of Satan. Woman, Brother Bill, you there? Now you got, can you hear me, brothers? Woman introduced sin to the human race through Adam. Amen. All right? Now I'm going to tell you a little something else. Anopheles quadrimaculatus in the feminine gender passes on the plasmonian in parasite and infection. Woman introduced sin to the human race through Adam. And the feminine gender of Anopheles maculatus quadrimaculatus introduced this plasmodian infection to all men. Plasmonium vivax, Plasmonium malarae, <laughs> Plasmonium avale, and the deadly Plasmonium falciparium. Parasite into the animal 
and into the human race. The second Adam, the, the son of woman, or the seed of the woman, Genesis 3.15, can give us the antidotes, the immunities for the human ailments and that human infectious Adamic sin that's given to all of us. What are you going to do with your problems and with your infection? And what kind of soil are you? What are you going to do from this day forward? What are you going to do? If you're going to be saved, there's only one way to be saved, and that is to ask the Lord to forgive you on the merits of Jesus Christ and his, Him only. There is nothing in this world that you can do for, for, to be saved. You can't be baptized. You can't join some church. It has nothing to do with salvation. You have to trust in Jesus Christ and Him alone and ask Him to forgive your sins on what He did. That's real salvation. Now, after you do that, you ought to be baptized if you're a child of God, and you ought to serve the Lord, and that's where you find out what kind of ground you are. What are you doing? What kind of ground you are? How would you classify yourself today? What kind of ground are you on? What kind of ground are you? Salvation is by grace alone, and Spirit God alone can bring the Lord into your life and cure you of that blood-born infection that you have from Adam. Thank you for your listening today. Uh, if you want to look at this little belt buckle up here, you can come by and look at it in a little bit. Thank you for uh, your attention and during those hard seats. Go out and do something eternal. But with a little introspection, think about this message today as you go through the day about what kind of ground you are and what you're going to do with that blood-borne infection that you have. And I hope I didn't bore you plumb to death with this lesson today. Anyway... Brother Bill, are you going to come up here? Yes. All right.